when I was in the University of Michigan, between my senior and junior year, I took a course just because I had looked at pictures in picture books and I'd already thought a lot of Cardi Bresson. And um, I took a course and boom, the first day I loved it. So since then, my senior year, I was the lab manager and um, ever since then it's been how to do, how to free up time as much as possible to work. Usually all I have to do is to say, um, oh, would you mind just keep on doing that or, or stay still or that's great. I don't have to, I wouldn't, I don't have the imagination to say, well, if you move here and you move here, I don't think that way. I think if it's good, yes. If it's no good, I don't take it. So um, it's a kind of positive response to something I see. Um, and I'm usually walking, sometimes driving, and um, the picture is really pretty much ready-made. I don't, I don't ask people to do anything much except maybe move in a little bit or slightly change what they're doing. I don't want to, cha I don't want to change the emotion. There's usually something going on that I feel would be uh, 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 disruptive to, to interrupt. Well, I think it's, it's a way of uh, making the photographs have some sort of intimacy. Um, some voluptuousness and maybe it crosses the line maybe when you two people are talking the normal talking distance is like this i did this with katrine um, but then if you are friends maybe you stand this close and then if you tell a secret you stand this close and then if you are lovers you stand really close and closer than this it has to be by agreement and so it's this area that i'm interested in because it's a little bit special, it's a little bit sacred, it's a little bit um, risky, uh, and so therefore it's charged. So I, I like to say that from two feet in, that's my territory. There's a point where you get so close that you've eliminated everything that doesn't matter, and then you step back a half an inch and it's there. If you go too close, then it's like a close-up, and it's just like looking at a mi through a microscope. If you get too far back, it's like a boring picture where you put the thing in the middle and the context around it is not active. Um, one of the things I love about Matisse, I think he said it once, was that the intervals between things matter just as much as the things. So that means the frame. The frame, frame is a big deal. That's why I like to have a big one and I can see from corner to corner and fill it up. And um, I'm always surprised when I look through the glass. I might think I'm going to take your picture um, but then when I look through the ground glass, something usually extra happens. How do you fill a frame with just one person, interestingly? How do you fill a frame with something still and singular? And by definition, you can't have a lot of stuff in the, in the frame. How do, you do, how do you do that interestingly? That was a challenge. Um, I mean, most portraits you know, have just sort of empty space around them and they're boring. Um, they're boring. I don't know how August Sander did it. I think a lot, some of, not a lot, but I think some of Richard Avedon's pictures are a little dull formally because they're just white space and the white space doesn't have any shape. It doesn't have any, f it's not part of the picture. Some it is. It's the ones where it is, where it graphically makes sense, like a cut glass, I love those. But the ones where it's just a, a head in the middle of, or a, a sh head and shoulders in the middle of the frame, uh, I don't think that they're that interesting. Well, I'm an only child, and I was the first male to come into the Brown family. Bibi's the oldest, and I was the first one to come knocking on the door and saying, you know, I'm going to take this one away if she'll come. Uh, and so I'm fascinated with siblings. I'm fascinated with the way they look alike and aren't alike. Um, I always have been. So to be in the middle of it all was pretty interesting. And they, they received me wonderfully, like a brother, We're very close. Um, so I was photographing buildings at the time. And one day, kind of for the hell of it, just like a lot of my things, they just sort of come, you know, I really trust my instincts. I really trust being open to something that comes up that I don't think is up there. If it comes up and I have a question, I've learned to keep the door open to it because there's my, my, my unconscious or my, some part of myself is 
wanting that to come out. And so I've learned to accept it, even if it's awful. Um, so I, just on a whim, I said, what if we take a picture? Um, the Brown family pictures were all of them as four little members of a team, dressed alike, standing in order, smiling. And uh, in the beginning, they actually offended me because they seemed like lies. It seemed like it was using my beloved medium to tell you know, a lie. They're not all happy. They're not all alike. Um, I've come to know since then, though, that that's their way of saying they love each other, to show those pictures. I didn't get that in the beginning. But anyway, their idea of being photographed was this sort of stiff thing that their parents, like the stage set kind of pictures, where they were controlled and the emotions were controlled. So when I said, no, just be yourself and give me what there is, be present as you like, and they did, and the picture came out and we, both, we all liked it. I liked it, they liked it. Um, the Museum of Modern Art liked it. I showed it to, to John Tchaikovsky. Um, and then the next year, one of them graduated from college. And because they had dresses on, it was unusual. Um, two of them had the same dress on, which was an, completely by chance. And I thought they looked cool together. And so I just got, I just, again, on a whim, I said, gee, you know that picture we took last year? Why don't we take another one this year? Stand in the same order, let's just do it. So they did, and I didn't really have any idea of there being any more until I saw the two side by side, and that's when I thought, okay, we gotta do this forever, if I can. And so they pretty much agree and let me do it. Um, not, there's one that doesn't like it very much, but sort of does it for the greater good. Um, and I think the other, and one's so-so about it, and BB and the other one love it. Uh, they, 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 none of them, the others, are artistic or have a sort of, are culturally sophisticated. So they don't really know about the museum world that the pictures exist in too much. They, to them, I think to them, they're really pictures of them. To me, they're pictures of them, but they're also pictures of four women that I'm telling kind of story about a long-term story, and it doesn't matter who they are. If you look at a digital print with a loop, um, you just see pixels after you get to a certain point. And if you look at one of mine, or any good analog print, you look at it with a loop and you just see more of it. You just, you just, it's like getting closer. You see more of the eyeball, you see the hairs on the edge of the eyeball. And so there's a sense of going into it as deeply as your eye can see. And if you hold it this distance, you can see detail that you wouldn't see if you were actually looking at the scene. And that Edward, Edward Weston said it, you know, in, his, in one of his day books someplace. That that's what he loved about it. And I, I agree. I, that's what I love about it too. There's a tactileness. There's a physicality to it. That's there's it does. It's kind of unmatched. It's a subtle thing, though. I don't expect everybody to like it. It's like you know, my grandmother would say, "What? You know, big deal." So you got a sharp picture, but. Um, to, I would say, no, Graham, it's, it's, it's about sensualness, it's about articulation, and she'd say, yeah, yeah, uh, tell me some more bullshit, you know. I, the, the thing that I have is, has been state of the art for 100 years, and doesn't, nothing gets better. Well, the, the last generation of lenses, I would say, that came out maybe 15 years ago, they were a little bit improve, improved, a lens, you know, than lenses of the previous generation. But that's really small, in, incremental. I could take a lens on my camera, I could take a same lens that Walker Evans used, and you wouldn't see the difference. I might see the difference, but it's really, you know, it's mostly being a contact print and a decent lens. Um, and that technology's been the same as, uh, you know, Timothy O'Sullivan used, um, photographing dead people in the Civil War. Um, and I kind of love it that it's the same technology. I don't want to be like a Luddite, but I love it that the same eloquent, articulate uh, uh, print has meaning in our time, has, can, ha can have meaning in our time, just it has in almost every, every time period since. Harry Callahan with Eleanor, Edward Weston, Adams, Ache, um, Charles Marville, you know, almost every period in photography has had somebody who uses 
something like an 8x10. And um, that's pretty neat, I think, given how quickly everything else has changed. I'm kind of honored, actually, to be part of it. Standalone, ideally, harder. Harder to do, harder to endure. Reality. I don't know about theory. I don't have any ideas. Fiction. Stories are more interesting than the truth. Oh, improvisation, of course. No question. Formulas are boring. because Formulas are boring because you already know where it's going. Improvisation, you don't know where it's going, so it's interesting. Uh, future, because it's more unknown, um, has more scarier, more exciting. Private. To become more calm and to become better. Happiness. It's something elusive, but one strives for it. Analog, it's better. Digital is no good. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. Digital's, digital, is, digital is good for the screen, but if you want a black and white print, there's nothing like analog. <clears throat> East Coast, no question. Too much. West Coast is too mellow. Black and white, more, more precise, more expressive, more condensed. Oh my gosh, Democrat. Republicans are greedy. Individual. Uh, groups, are, gr groups can be stupid. Groups can um, groups can comp be compromised. Direct, no question. It's better better to get right to it. Beer, I like the taste better. Um, it 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 quenches thirst better, and it's less potent. You don't get drunk as easily. Dog. I love dogs. I feel like I'm a dog sometimes. I feel like I look like a dog sometimes. An Airedale Terrier. <laughs> Shut down, Matisse. Oh my gosh. Uh, do I have to choose? Matisse. I think he was probably more talented, um, and there are probably more masterpieces in his uh, whole life's work than there are with Chardin, but I hate to choose. Beach. I love the sun, and I love, love the ocean. By bike. Uh, by, by bike, I'm... Um, I feel freer, and I like moving through the air. Day, I like light. Things, things should show up. Nighttime um, is, <clears throat> nighttime is, is um, scary sometimes. Nighttime is, nighttime is hard to get detail. Just like if you photograph at night, it's hard to get full detail. So experiencing the night, it's hard to experience it as fully as it is to experience the day. The night is partly about what's not there, but the day is about what's there.